If you have your Bibles today, would you turn with me to the 116th Psalm? Psalm 116. And uh, with your permission, I'd like to read from the New Living Translation, Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy, because he bends down to listen. I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again. For the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believed in you. So I said, I am deeply troubled, O Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. What can I offer the Lord? For all that he has done for me, I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O oh Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the house of the Lord in the heart of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, would you touch our hearts and our minds and our wills and would you bring us into perfect alignment with your thoughts for us today? Lord, I pray that through this engagement with you that it would leave us changed in ways that we need to be changed, Lord so that we can continue to reflect you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The psalmist starts with the words, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm not sure how you all resonate with that, what that means to you. How do you love the Lord? It's one thing when we have something tangible in front of us to love, isn't it? It's easier then we can see and then we relate. But how do you love an intangible God, one who is not seen? I think each one of us finds our own way of expressing our love for us. Because as I've shared before with you many times, uh, love, as DC Talk used to sing, is a verb, isn't it? It's an action thing. It's a doing thing. So, so how do you love the Lord? I, I remember early, in early days of CAP, uh, there was a lady who came to me and said, Pastor, I'm praying that... One of these days, you and God will have a pillow fight. And I thought, all right. A, I can't imagine throwing a pillow at God. 
but b i can't even imagine this scene to have a pillow fight but i understood her sentiment that it was that we have such a relationship you know you have pillow fights with people you love isn't it i mean these are not pillows are not what you use against enemies they wouldn't go very far right? and that was what she was hoping for me and i've continued to wrestle with it how how do we love god and we each find our various ways to do it but the psalm says i love the lord because he hears my voice he hears my voice and then he says he bends down to listen can you can you imagine that the god of the universe kind of hushes heaven and says hang on my child my son my daughter is calling i've got to listen he bends down and he listens to what we have to say you know this song very easily divides up into four kind of uh, components if you would the first would be what was happening with the psalmist what was his situation the second is what he did what did he do with that situation that he was in the third is how did the lord respond to him in this situation and the fourth is what was his response to the lord's response to his situation four areas that very easily just kind of break up for us what was happening to him well what was his situation verse 3 tells us death death wrapped its ropes around me the terrors of the grave overtook me i saw only trouble and sorrow death wrapped its ropes around me i wonder whether any of you can relate to that whether any of you can relate to death wrapping its ropes around you that you've been at the very brink of life and death not knowing if there's another breath that is coming and maybe this was in a hospital room you didn't know whether you were going to come out but you did but you did but you know that feeling and you've never forgotten it and the the psalm says it's like the terrors of the grave it's like he was looking past this to the grave that was how grave the situation was for him and maybe you've been in that kind of a situation maybe you are in that kind of a situation that you're here but the situation that you are facing is grave he says that he saw only trouble and sorrow and i wonder whether joy and peace and all those beautiful things that comes as promises from the lord are are not there in your life whether today you're just overwhelmed he says in verse 6 i was brought low i was brought low just brought down knocked down and life has a way of doing that sometimes isn't it to knock us down we feel that we can't get any lower whether it's situations or people or whatever we've been brought low and then in verse 10 and 11 he says i was deeply troubled and anxious deeply troubled and anxious you know it's possible that you've come to this thanksgiving sunday and you've looked at all of this decorations and stuff like that and you said this is all great wonderful to look at but the situation that i'm going through is is really difficult it's so difficult for me to be in a festive mood or to 
be thankful because I'm troubled and I'm anxious. There are things that are bogging me, things that are unresolved, things that I'm worried about. And I brought them with me to the church because that's the way they are. They are like ropes that encircle me. They haven't left me. And that was his situation. And maybe there are some of you here who can resonate with that. But we ask the question, secondly, what what did he do? What did he do? In verse 4 we see, Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please save me. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. And I said, please Please, Lord, save me. I believed in you, verse 10. Verse 11, I cried out to you. Sometimes we look at verses like this and we think, yeah, that's the natural thing to do. Isn't it to cry out to the Lord when we get into trouble? And yet, how often we fail to do it. When trouble comes our way, then we begin to deal with it. The way we know how, in our own strength, in our own knowledge, in our own wisdom, we think it's our fight, it's our battle. And we forget that the first thing to do is to call out to Him. And yet when we are completely spent, tired, ready to throw in the towel, towel, then we call out to Him. But the psalmist, as he saw himself in this situation, he said, I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, please save me. Save me. How did the Lord respond? He says, he delivered me. Verse 6, he protected me and he saved me. He protected me and he saved me. Verse 7, the Lord has been good to me. Verse 8, he has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. In verse 16, he has freed me from my chains. That's what the Lord did. Protected, saved, was good to him. Saved him from death. And all of these things is what God did for him. What about you, beloved? Where are you in crying out to the Lord or in your situation, your circumstance? Has God reached out to you? Have you felt his protection. I know that as we look at our lives, especially on Thanksgiving Day, that we can look at our lives and say, yeah, of course, as I look back, there have been many times I've raised stones of Ebenezer all along, stones of remembrances that remind me how God has protected me, how he has saved me. And I know today that he is a good God. He's a good God, for he takes care of me. Save me from death, my eyes from tears. Sometimes the tears just come, don't they? You can't hold them back. And maybe today, there are things that are pressing hard upon your heart. And you think that you are cried out, that the reservoir of tears within you is dried up, and yet they come. And you can't hold them back, because the situation is such. The 
psalmist is saying, God is able to touch you in such a way, beloved, that the tears stop. The tears stop. And maybe those are tears that you've been shedding for your family members, maybe for friends, maybe for a, a situation, maybe for a reconciliation, whatever. I wonder this morning whether God is saying, I'm, I'm still here. It's not your fight. The battle is mine. When are you going to throw the ball to me? Let me take it. When are you going to tag me? Because he's the protector, beloved. You and I, we are his children. He'll do anything for us, just as Parents will do anything for their children. He loves us that much. He has freed my chains. Broken those things. Crippled by fear maybe. Anxious thoughts. He breaks them. And he says no more. I will keep in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on me. That's the peace I will give. And that's what he gives even today, this morning, wherever you are in your situation, the circumstances that are around you, God is with you, watching out for you, his eye on you, waiting to protect, to save. What's the psalmist's response to this? In verse 7 he says, Calm my soul, let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. And so I walk in the Lord's presence. As I live here on earth, Calm my soul. Tell my soul that it is okay. I don't know how many of you are into cricket. I am. But because I am, I have to look at the ads that come before and after every over. And about a month or maybe two months back, there was an ad that caught my attention. It was an ad that had Rohit Sharma, Indian captain, and it had, I think it was Amir Khan. And it was an ad where Rohit Sharma was batting and Amir Khan was going to bowl. And you all know him in his own inimitable way. He came in a convoluted way to bowl and then he bowled, and before that he said to Roy Sharma, middle stump. Yeah. In other words, I've got your middle stump. Roy Sharma said bowl. So he bowls and Roy hits the ball and hits it with such power that it flies past his face. And for a minute he's just transfixed. And then he turns around and he says, all is well, all is well. <laughs> Remember three idiots, right? All is well. And I thought about that, that when we hand things to the Lord, we turn to our souls and we say, calm, calm my soul. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to beat like that anymore. Relax. Let the tension go. God has taken it over. Calm my soul. And that's what the psalmist says. Let my soul be at rest again. For the Lord has been good to me. As I live here on earth. And then he says. I will lift up the cup of salvation. But before that. In verse 12. He asks a very, very pertinent question. Lord. 
within my situation i've cried out to you you've helped me now lord in verse 12 what shall i render to the lord what shall i render to the lord for all his benefits to me i love the king james version on this line it's very beautiful he says what shall i render unto jehovah for he has done so very much for me what shall i render unto jehovah what a good question to ask on thanksgiving isn't it because we know that whatever may be going on in my life it doesn't change the fact that god has been good amen i was telling the first service that if i had been in a different setting maybe in a church that was charismatic quote and quote i would have said to you turn to your neighbor and say god is good and they would have done it but you all will look at me like what god is good i know it but i'm not going to tell my neighbor that right? but isn't he good yeah i mean we can talk ad nauseum about the things that he has done for us he's been so good and the psalms recognizes and out of that he says what what shall i render unto jehovah what what shall i render unto jehovah for he has been so so good to me and then he says in verse 13 i will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the lord's name for saving me i will keep my promises to the lord i will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the lord i will fulfill my vows to the lord in the presence of all his people he says god has come through for me he has inclined his ear in his compassion he has drawn me to safety in spite of maybe an unthankful attitude his grace has been so strong he has been a gracious god he has preserved me kept me and he has saved me and he says to this question what shall i render unto jehovah he says i will do this i will do this he says three things beloved he says and i want to just present that to you i will offer a witness he says i will offer a witness in the congregation about what god has done and then he says i will offer up a prayer of thanks or an a, an offering of thanks to god as the niv puts it and then he says i will keep my promises i will keep my vows to you three things and if we were to ask that question beloved in the light of all that god has done i looked around you and saw unanimous assent that god has done remarkable things in your life enough for us to be thankful today not because of the situations and circumstances that we are in but because of who he is and how much he loves and cares for each one of us he leans down to listen to us and so to the question what shall i render unto jehovah maybe we can take these three things beloved we can say i will offer a witness today today i will tell somebody what the lord has done in my life how he has come just somebody somebody i will find and say look what the lord has done thank you xavier for including that look what the lord has done i need to tell you he's done this remarkable thing in my life and i got i've got to tell you and then secondly to offer up a prayer of thanks to god just there's a song that says lord today i don't need anything i just want to thank you 
no supplications today lord i don't come asking for something i don't come with my hands out i come with my hands lifted up i just want to thank you for what you have done and maybe today beloved invite the holy spirit to just keep showing you keep showing you those moments when god touched you when god came through for you and as he brings them to mind say lord i am so thankful for what you did in that recall how you felt about it lord i was so anxious at that time lord i was so sad i was broken lord but you came through for me i want to thank you for it today and then thirdly beloved sama says i will keep my promises you know i think that the the road that we have traveled as christians as ones who bear his name is a road that is filled with many many broken promises because when we are in need we say lord if you get me out of this situation this is what i will do and we may do it for a season and then we forget we stop because now that has been resolved and i wonder beloved today whether we can look back and see look at the promises that we have made to the lord and say lord i broke that promise but i am going to make sure it's fulfilled in my life i'm sorry lord for it beloved let's pick up those broken promises those vows that we have made to him when he came through for us and say lord i'm going to now come through on my promise three things let's talk about him to somebody and say look what the lord has done let's turn our attention up to him and say lord for all these things that your spirit has brought to me i give you thanks and then thirdly lord for all those promises lord that i haven't come through on i'm coming through lord with your help i'm going to make sure that i keep those promises come we thankful people come raise the song of harvest home all is safely gathered in ere the winter storm begins god our maker that provide for our wants to be supplied come to god's own temple come raise the song of harvest home shall we pray lord what shall i render unto you sears our hearts lord for we realize that we have not done much lord for all that you have done and so lord today just these three things help us lord you bring to us master those people those in done lord you bring to mind those instances when you have come through so that we can raise a bouquet of thanks to you and then lord show us broken promises that we have made to you in the power and in the authority of the holy spirit and in the name of jesus amen